Yeah, I'm a Doomerang. I'm Norma Ingram. I'm a Radri woman. I was born and raised on the Aboriginal Reserve at Cowra, Midwestern New South Wales, and I, as I always say, under the Aboriginal Welfare Act. I'm the youngest of 11 children. My family connections, whilst I'm Wiradjuri, um, you go down to the Riverina, all of that country down there, I've got lots and lots of families. But I also have family that uh, moved down to Melbourne too, so a bit of a footprint on this country, on the East Coast for me. Because we lived under the Aboriginal Welfare Act, uh, we were really restricted in our movements and what we can do. So I didn't really get to meet a lot of non-Aboriginal people growing up because all my friends were my family that uh, lived on, on Irambi, on the Aboriginal Reserve. So when I was about 11, um, my mother moved to Sydney. So I moved down here to Gadigal country and want to acknowledge acknowledge Gadigal country to the traditional owners um, and I've lived here in, in this part uh, ever since. Here in Sydney when I went to school um, I loved it. I love history, I love uh, English uh, and uh, yeah they were my two main subjects but I certainly loved history. I wanted to know about about the world and where we come from and and particularly you know what I wanted to know I wanted to know why it was that we as Aboriginal people were in that situation where we had to live under the, either the Aboriginal Protection Act or the Aboriginal Welfare Act and and all of those things that were um, that we as Aboriginal people were forced to experience and so I just wanted to know a lot about that and I thought history will give me some of those answers, which it, which it did. I was a teenager and I went down and Charlie, I always say Charlie was a man before his time. He really, it was, look, our, our country was very racist. Uh, and we, we didn't have any Aboriginal organisations when the foundation was established, established. And Charlie set up the foundation for, for social, uh, issues. But what also was happening, and this was in the 1960s, is that we as, as teenagers that came from all over New South Wales and landed at the Foundation for Aboriginal Affairs, we were really interested in the political aspect uh, of all of that. Uh, my undergraduate degree was in teaching, secondary, English and history. And then later on, I was, I was really lucky to go on to Harvard uh, University in, in the States and be the first Aboriginal to um, graduate from Harvard, which is fantastic. I loved it. Well, for me, I, I already had three children and I had to leave my three children here in Australia with my mother and, and my sister and my family. <clears throat> and um, so for me, when I went to Harvard, um, I couldn't fail. I couldn't allow myself to fail. So I, I put a lot of pressure on myself that perhaps you wouldn't do if you were home here in Australia and you had your children and your family here. We set Marawena up as part of all of that uh, political movement in the early 1970s. What we as the Aboriginal women did was we said, well, okay, look, that this is all happening, but we really need to, to be looking at the next generations. So we set Marawina up. It first started as the breakfast program so that we're able to you know, give the children some breakfast before they went to school because many of them were going to school without breakfast. And so we were able to further develop the breakfast program uh, into um, a, a preschool. We started off as a preschool and then it developed into a full day care centre. And then we're also uh, able to get a new building in Everly Street, Redfern, and upstairs we built a women's hostel. Even today, I meet with some of those children who went to Marowena who are adults who are parents now and indeed grandparents. And uh, you know, it's, they, just, they still remember the impact of Marowena uh, on them culturally. Culture means to me about who I am uh, and, and it, it's, it, I'm a Wiradjuri woman, Gali, Lachlan River, 
fresh water. We get our culture from Mother Earth. Everything that we do and say and our language and everything comes from Mother Earth. So when you look at whether we're fresh water, salt water, um, our brothers and sisters who are the plants and the animals, we take care of each other. And I love that word, what we call is reciprocity. Love that word because reciprocity means I care for you, you care for me. But it's not just about the people, our brothers and sisters, our friends who are humans. We also have reciprocity with Mother Earth and all that she gives to us too. We pay homage to Mother Earth in, in many different ways, through our dances, through our songs, through our art, through our conversations with each other, uh, just to make sure that she is not forgotten um, and, and that she is, is okay. But a couple of years ago, I was on the, um, the Indigenous Advisory Panel for the City of Sydney. And having a discussion with the uh, Lord Mayor, uh, Clover Moore, um, she said, well, Norma, you know, you, you're only able to give advice, you can't make decisions. Red flag, bull, you know the story. I said, well, I'm going to have to go somewhere where I can make decisions. So I did stand for the City of Sydney. Uh, about two years ago when we had the state elections, um, I put my hand up uh, and I was uh, pre-selected for the seat of Newtown, which I mean, it's the area that I grew up in. Uh, and I'm really pleased that Erskineville, I went to Erskineville Public School and they've named one of their sports houses after me. It's named Ingram. And so when these doors open, I just have to step through. And so I stood for the seat of Newtown, worked really, really hard. Uh, didn't get there, but we just have to keep going. So I'm hoping that there are some other Aboriginal people who will put their hand up and do that because we need Aboriginal people at every level of government because we need to be in there making those decisions, influencing, influence other members, other people to see our perspective. So we need to be in there, we need to continue. And, and that's me, I will continue to do that. I will continue to be involved politically. It should not be entirely up to Aboriginal people to save this country and to save Mother Earth. All Australians have that responsibility and they will, I think, know a little bit more when they know more about Aboriginal culture. It is very important to teach Aboriginal studies in schools because we need to make sure that Aboriginal culture, Aboriginal studies, Aboriginal people are alive and that the whole of Australia know about that because if we don't do it, I'm just afraid that you know, it, it can be lost. And we only have to look at our Aboriginal languages. Uh, so much of that because it was against the law for us to practice our languages, it was against the law for us to practice our culture. It was against the law for us to be Aboriginal. So we have to bring all of that back now. We've lost too much already and we don't want to lose it. We want to bring that all back. And the way that we do it is we have people, um, our elders, just maybe going into schools and talking to the schools because that's where you could get, that's where you could get so much uh, information out. So our elders and our communities are so important to be passing on our cultural um, information to others uh, and particularly the next generation so they can understand the, the history, they can understand uh, what we have experienced and they can understand who we are and our culture and how we continue to practice Aboriginal culture whether it's in Redfern or whether it's in Brisbane or whether it's in Alice Springs or Caratha or wherever. Yeah, we can teach in the classroom, but it's so much um, better. And, and if you could get out and be amongst people and sit down and have a yarn, just sit down and have a yarn, you know, listen to, listen to our elders, have a yarn, listen to their experiences. You need to, as an Aboriginal person, be able to go to places and as a child go to school, being proud of who you are uh, and not being punished for being an Aboriginal in the school system. As you are saying to those students, you are important. Your family is important. 
your community support and a part of who we are. To bring the uh, Aboriginal elders into the schools really has to be a cooperation between the schools and the local communities. So you need to look at each one of those communities and each one of those communities, you have Aboriginal organisations, you have Aboriginal uh, people and the elders who are happy to, to participate and, and to see what their children are doing, but they have to be invited into the school. But also, those communities need to be invited out, uh, need to invite the school out to the community, so it's a two-way street. So what I always say to the next generation, to young people, if you are lucky enough to have a grandparent and, and a great-grandparent, please just sit and listen. You know, they, they're not just gonna come out and give you that information. You have to earn it. But they've got a lot of wisdom, they've got a lot of knowledge, they've got a lot of experience. Sit and listen and learn.